Oh, hi, it's Rob, and I'm back up in the kitchen today. Um, this is going to be uh, part of working on the wiring for the under cabinet lights. Last time I got them installed, this time I'm going to put the wire around, well, try and route the wiring in a way so that it's not obtrusive and hanging down everywhere and looks, you know, reasonably professional, at least as professional as I'm going to get. Uh, I've got a shop light underneath the long cabinet over here, which is why there's this big glaring light from this side. Uh, but that's just so that I have enough light to work on and so that you can see it. So I'm trying to get a decent shot here. Uh, at the join line of the two cabinets, there is a space between them. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. Uh, I want to tuck these wires up in here. Uh, but these wire nuts are way too big to do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use my handy dandy soldering gun and I will be soldering these and heat shrinking them so that I can just stuff them back up in here. First thing I need to do is drill some holes in here so that I can get the wires to you know, go through those and they'll come out in the center space. So I'm gonna work on that next. Well, some of you may be asking why I didn't uh, pre-drill the holes before I installed the lights so that I could just put the wires on the ends and bring them down and not and have all the hidden have all the wiring hidden uh, the simple answer is that I would have had to think about it first and thinking is not always my strong suit So all I'm doing now is installing this heat shrink tubing over the top of these. Uh, this isn't the ideal use of heat shrink tubing, but it's going to be good enough for uh, what I'm doing here. So that makes for a nice, relatively clean installation that's not going to be uh, too annoying for anybody. I mean, if you look really hard, you'll be able to see it, but I'm not all that worried. Now I just have to do that for the rest of these.
All right, this corner is going to be a little interesting because I have these two that are coming off of it that I'm going to need to attach. So I'll probably end up using these same wires, but uh, there's a lot of room up inside here. So I'll be using that for the wire run down to this particular piece. I still have to figure out how to wire uh, the other side. All right, the next big question is how I want to route the wiring. I mean, I'm going to be powering it from up in there. And ideally, I'd like it to come down these pieces because these are big blank hollows. Um, but that would mean they have to go across these cabinets. Now, that one might not be so bad because it's got a little space up top, but this one has very little space over on this side. So I'm going to have to take a look at these cabinets and see if there's possibly a better solution. All right, it looks like I might be in luck because they're, the top of the shelf seems to have space above it. So I can probably go in there and trail it down. Getting it into that corner so that it goes this way and then down it's going to be a little tricky. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but uh, see if I can give it a shot. Yeah, the other alternative would be to bring it down from here, you know, either out the side or down, and then go alongside this the windowsill, keep it tacked up against there, and go down underneath here. And that is probably going to be easier because it's got easier access on both sides and I do have enough space to run it under there so I think that may be the way to go because otherwise trying to get up inside here because these go all the way up to the top on both sides it's nearly impossible to try and get any kind of a straight shot where I could pull the wires through so I think I'm just going to cut my losses and do the uh, <clears throat> do the side of the rail trick. So I'm going to try and do this. It's difficult in this position, but I'm going to be soldering these together. <clears throat> and there's a certain technique to be using when you're soldering wires like this. You heat it up from one side and apply solder to the other side. You don't want to apply solder directly to the soldering iron because that doesn't mean that the, the materials in the joint are hot enough yet to actually solder. You want it to be melting all the way through.
Normally I'd use a heat gun for this, but uh, my heat gun is out in the shed and it's about 15 degrees below zero right now. A lighter works just as well. All right, this last piece I'm going to bridge over the stove hood and I'm going to run wire down here, up through here, inside the stove up here, and then down and back over to this side. Well, I decided to drop the vent hood for this because um, I can run it up along here instead of trying to run it through inside the vent hood and it'll drop down just perfectly and not pinch anywhere. All right, I don't really have good light up here, but what I've done is I've connected up a temporary power supply uh, to this terminal block. This is also temporary. Everything up here is just temporary for now. We're doing testing, but uh, I can snake all this away and have it up here for now. So we have the under sink lighting, under cabinet lighting here, under cabinet lighting there, under cabinet lighting there, and <clears throat> there. Unfortunately, <laughs> this whole section is uh, not, not hanging in there. So I've got a connection in here somewhere that is an issue. I don't know where the issue is. So I'm going to have to do some additional troubleshooting. And, uh, well, I'm going to hold off on that for tonight because that's going to be another project in and of itself. So, for now, toodaloo.